mask. This is a pattern that we did at dark hour. We had a couple extra, so in the confer, it's kind of expensive. As far as material to work with, it's an expensive material, so you want to conserve mask. This is a pattern that we did at dark hour. We had a couple extra, so in the confer, it's kind of expensive. As far as material and under, there's your problem. All of this will be ready to go. And this was, again, it was cut for a different uh, mask, but uh, it will certainly work for this, as long as this point of the front is up here, uh, the shoulders point over there, that's going to be kind of wonderful. sucker so that this is all exposed because contact cement I want to hit this and this with contact cement. Hello Linda, hello Dr. Mac. Um, no, I will not be re-sculpting the pig and mask in the near future. Hello from Colorado. Hello to everybody. All right, what do I need? Make one of these because I'm going to use the uh, black quick change airbrush from Harbor Freight in order to spray contact cement. Um, yes, of course, you can uh, just brush it on and that works great, but I find if I spray it, it actually dries a little faster. You don't want to try and spray old content. It just gets too gummy and thick. Um, you can thin it with naphtha, but then you're, you're making naphtha into an aerosol, and that's bad. So generally, I uh, just, if I know I need to spray it, I buy a new can. That can's a couple of weeks old, so no biggie. And it, this is actually pretty precise as far as where it goes, and you really want that. It's thick enough where it doesn't just shotgun out of here, because you don't want that. It is a little bit hard to see, because it's not a... Hello, Aaron and CM. You're making a mask mold today, Jack? That's awesome. What are you molding? Hello, Michael Lassiter. And you guys can't see what's happening very well. Sorry. Um, I swear I'm airbrushing. Wow, Mexico, that's awesome. There's a lot of good mask factories in Mexico. A lot of great masks are made there. And I think that has actually started a lot of good sculptors in Mexico. And see how it comes out. There's less of it. There's less of it on this mask than if I brushed it with a brush. And because of that, it's going to cure up faster. It's going to dry faster because there's just less of it to dry. Here, I'm spraying the fabric. And what's great is that uh, you don't, you have to put so much on that it soaks in with a brush. And with this, I'm really just hitting the surface. But the air pressure is enough to push it in and make it lock in to the fabric of the mask. So, I'm, I'm just a fan of this method, if you couldn't tell. Back you guys up just a little bit. 
go. We'll make sure it's live chat. Jeff the Killer. Uh, so Jeff the Killer is creepy pasta, right? Uh, that's a that's a creepy pasta, and that's something that uh, a lot of you crazy kids are into. I actually study creepy pasta because part of my job is to scare people, and that is a new form of horror and a new form of storytelling. So I'm hip. I think a lot of folks over 30 don't know who that is, but uh, I do, I do. Yeah, I don't know if Creepy Pasta will ever get bigger. I mean, you're starting to see movies made from it. There's a movie about the rake coming out. There is uh, a Slender Man movie, if it's not out already. Direct the video, but a movie's a movie, you know? All right, so I just got that sprayed, but I also feel it's going to be close to uh, being ready to attach. Hello, Vanishing Gates. Hello, Horror Beauty Effects. Very good to see all of you guys on here. I really appreciate your support and just hanging out with me. It's a lonely life. A little bit of ace of base for you. Uh, it can be lonely in a shop. I love what I do, so that's not an issue. But, uh, yeah, you don't always have people in with you. There we go. That's where we want. Now that both sides are actually uh, glued, uh, they just stick together with a little bit of pressure. Now this mask here is for Dark Hour Haunted House, the haunted house where I work. And we have a werewolf show coming up, like all werewolves. Um, we mix it up a little bit with some other stuff, but it's a werewolf based show which is pretty successful. So patch it in. I'll figure that out later. First, I want to get everything I can get glued down, glued down. I want to make sure the hair on the cheeks is even. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be even. And there's a little bit here that must not have gotten enough glue on it. Easy fix. Just go in and spray what I got to spray. Poison. And uh, this I want to be open, this mouth, because my beard will stick through that. The actors at Dark Hour, their beards are going to stick through, and that will make them you know, a little more realistic. Thank you very much, Vanishing. I appreciate it. Oh man, the Harbor Freight airbrush is amazing. Hello from Scotland. I have a terrible Scottish accent just to be nice to you. But maybe later I can't resist myself. But right now I can resist. So. Hello! Okay, and again, it dries very fast because I sprayed it. Okay, this side, I don't think it's really going to need anything as far as filler goes. But I am going to soak this area down with contact cement. And you'll see what my fix on the other side, too. I'll hit that with contact cement. And I'm just going to fold that over. Where, where it's all woven. And so what you do is you hit the line with... Uh, you hit the seam, basically, where they meet with contact cement. You just pull the hair down. Okay. Guys, there are times I understand when you guys cannot see. Uh, get this where I need it.
See you there, and I can... Uh, it's covered in hair. Not whatever. I will have to do a little patch in here, I think. Anything, you know what, if you have to make a big monster or full costume, and you want to get into the line of work, I suggest doing some hair work first because it's easier. Uh, doing something covered in hair is easier than doing something covered in skin. It just is. So be aware of that. The little piece that I cut off, that's what I'm going to patch it with. That'll work just fine in there. And this hair is going to go right over that little seam, and uh, you really won't know that that wasn't all part of the same exact mask. Okay, so let's see how this fits. Uh, it's on. I don't have to wait anymore. Uh, it's on. It's attached. And now the best thing to tell me what I have to do next is to try it on, which you know I'm kind of a fan of. Uh, can you tell where that patch is? No. Okay. So uh, that's that. That's one down. I have another one of these to do. Uh, normally, once you get the strap set, you can leave the strap set for your head size and just slide your head in and out. So this guy goes in the done pile over there. Let's do another one. Okay. Put him on the head. And it should be the exact same. This is the same sculpt, the same mask. And it should be the same cutout piece. But uh, I do want to cut all of this away. Whereas before, I thought I might want to keep some of it. I don't. And I'll probably uh, cut a little more of the hair out. These were made at dark hour for a different mask that we did. But it's close enough, it works fine. Oh, werewolves are sexy. I love them. Oh, well, very cool, Eric. I'm glad about that. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can share your werewolf with me. Yeah, it's important to have enough hair on the neck. Hey, Scott, good to see you on. Um, it's, it's important to have enough hair on the neck uh, to blend into a shirt, blend into a furry chest, or whatever you want to do. So, uh, that is not Monster Maker's latex. This is, this latex is actually from Bitty Mold Supply. I like to get my latex from Fright Props uh, or from Bitty Mold Supply. Uh, Bitty Mold Supply is local to me. Bug Mitch for years saying, hey, you really ought to carry some mass latex. So I felt I should buy from him. Yeah. Let's see. Ah, the fumes aren't too bad. I'm used to them. Well, very cool, Eric. I'd love to see some of your work. And Michelle, thank you so much. I do hope to visit Ireland one day. Okay, there we go. The, my next mask sculpt, I actually have to make a creature inspired by the Demogorgon. Uh, so that'll probably be the next sculpt. 
And then I have a two-piece eight to do. I have a two-piece eight and a Denny Gorgon inspired mask. Go and let's see how much I use. I used about half hater of contact cement. Let's move this closer. Let's make our lives easier, shall we? Uh, now, uh, a note. The contact cement will eat through this plastic over time. So, because this is something that you want to keep contact cement stored in there all the time. It will kill it. It'll die. So don't do that. Um, pretty much I know I'm going to throw this little bottle away when I'm done. getting to the point where if I turn the bottle sideways, it's not hitting the straw, so. The contact cement bond is just so good. It's uh, very useful. All right, just about out. I'm going to refill here. So hi, everybody. Happy uh, Sunday evening here in Texas. It may be a different evening for you. I have some other folks over in Scotland and Ireland watching. So it's probably, I have no idea. I don't know, know the time differences. I have a better idea of Australia because I have a couple friends over there. Uh, Eric, I buy my, okay, now this isn't synthetic hair, this is fur, and I, you, know, you easiest place to buy fur is Joanne Fabrics, look online and get a coupon, okay, and you'll get it 50% off, so fur that is, uh, gonna, that's supposed to be 30 bucks a yard, you'll get for $15 a yard, Joanne's is the best place if you're buying five yards or less. If you're buying more than five yards of fur, then you probably want to order from a place like Monterey Mills, who is a fabric supplier, and that is who Joanne buys from. And uh, there you're going to pay about $11 or $12 a yard, but you've got to buy in a 16-yard roll, and that's what I do, is I buy a 16-yard roll. So I buy rolls of this fabric at a time. It's not even on a, uh, you know, it's not on a bolt, it's on a roll. All right, so that's that. Uh, I did get a little more shut out this time, so I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for that to get tacky. While I'm waiting on that to get tacky, comments. Uh, Scott, the first mask that I ever made was actually a Bigfoot mask. 1.34 a.m. in the Netherlands. Gotcha. Happy Monday morning from Japan. You're in the future. Hooray. Um, so the hair that I get on strips, all right, if you are in the States, you can buy it from Amazon or eBay. The 
The brand that I like is called She, S-H-E. And you know what? I'm going to turn the camera around so that you guys can see it without. The brand is called She. And it is Yaki WBG 8-inch paint. This is pink. This is like clown hair or something, uh, depending. But I have a whole... That whole thing is just full of hair because... I make a lot of monsters. You need a lot of hair. But yeah, there's lots of uh, different hair, brown, mostly caught up. Yes, uh, Brick in the Yard is uh, Bitty Mold Supply. That is correct. Mostly caught up. Yes, uh, Brick in the Yard is... Uh, Bitty Mold Supply, that is correct. Wonderful. And I don't think I need patch on this one just because of how I stretched it and how it got put on. back from that one from the hairline so I can see the hairline and I'll be able to spray it later. And a lot of this I'm doing to me, I apologize guys. Uh, hopefully you all understand that I have to be a special effects artist first and a camera person second. Do that trimming that I had to do. For that trimming, I use a little razor blade. I'm trying to lose these things. The last thing you want to do is run your hand across that by accident. So it is a beautiful werewolf Sunday here in Texas. Uh, I'll be doing lots of hair work all evening, I believe. Getting things cannot out. Save that little piece. Even that little piece. Save that. I might need that as a plug, you know. If not on this mask, then maybe on the next one. So there's no reason for me to get rid of it. So I had sculpted some on the David Mosher head form. And what I, the only thing I don't like about it is the ears are forced into the wrong spot. So your ears are never great or it's hard to get the back of an ear so that's tough horror beauty effects what's my favorite mask i ever made you know what the two-piece werewolves that i'm working on right now it is a joy to me to be able to make that mask because it uh you know, it's important to me you know as, as, as a kid as a and Wolfman's my favorite monster. So, you know, that's, that's, and that's the best werewolf mask I ever made. This most recent one. Uh, I have some other hair videos too, but tonight I'm going to do some of the stranded hair, which is the synthetic hair, and I'm going to use the fun fur, of course, because I'm using that now. And again, I... So I can pull this hair forward, and I'll pull the hair forward, and that will hide the fun edge. That is a trick that I learned from looking at Be Something Studios masks. Okay. 
See, what happens is I put on contact cement, and you have to wait a little bit for it to cure. But the first area that I did is over here, and that's already tacky. And I'm not even pulling the whole. Yes, I am going to do a black haired one. Uh, I'm going to do a black haired one for my buddy Brad. Um, and I have two different, I have a couple surprises for that mask. Um, I don't have any black fur here right now. So uh, his won't be one I make tonight. I'm waiting on my black fur to come in. See how that, there's no. Here, you can kind of see the edge of that hair. Well, if you do that, then, you know, you have a, a hairy edge as opposed to this, you know, factory razor cut edge of the mask. It just looks like hair. Hair is very forgiving, guys. If you know how to work with it, hair is very forgiving. If you uh, don't listen to the hair and don't look at it enough, then uh, it's gonna eat your lunch because it'll look like you don't know what you're doing. Few things are worse than bad. You can get away with. Uh, I would, if I didn't have this little plug of hair, I'd just paint that black and no hair. These are gonna be in Dark Hour Haunted House. So uh, I'm, you know, I control the lighting, I control where they're seen and how they're seen. So I, I know how much leeway I have with my stuff. If it's going to someone else's haunted house, you know, you got to make sure every little hole is filled and all that. But Okay. Probably enough time. Get hair out of the way. Put that little patch in. Perfect. Then this hair down. Yeah, all right, there we go. And pressure, the key to contact cement working well is pressure. Get it on there and then push, really push it on because the, the harder you push them together, uh, the better that bond is gonna be. If you just touch them, it'll stick, but not like if you push them together, get all the air out of there and all that. Really force that chemical bond to occur. And as a mask maker, I'm gonna get up on a little soapbox here, all right? And I'm gonna say, if you sculpt eyes into your mask and you don't cut out eye holes when you sell it, you don't make masks, you make prop heads. And that's okay, that's great, but it's not a mask. As a mask maker, I know that my work is going to go on an act working in a haunted attraction or working a queue line or in a, in a movie or whatever they're going to be. It's going to be on a person. And you have to remember that there's a person inside of that mask. So yes, every time I take the head off, I try it on. Every time I trim it, I try it on just to make sure that it's comfortable enough. And there we go. So now we're on strapped. I want it to be comfortable. If something's poking me in the eye, then it's going to poke someone else in the eye. And frankly, a lot of people won't trim a mask up. They're like, oh, no, I paid, I paid $150 for this. I'm not going to cut it with scissors. It's stabbing you in the eye. Cut that bit out. You can't breathe. Cut the nose holes out. I'm going to jump back off my soapbox. Sorry. Here we go. There we go, okay. All right, that's good. Check out this rolls and fits. I feel like it's tucked up under somewhere. And it was. I leave a lot of extra here so that there's good neck movement. And if you tuck it in under a shirt, you can move and not pull it out from under the shirt. this is good. It, uh, it touches right above my eye right here. So when I take this off, I'm going to trim that. 
That way it won't bother the next guy. That's what you get. You bug me and I cut you. I cut you, man. All right. That was my... Uh, you didn't miss most of it. I got a lot more of these to do, bud. <laughs> Don't sweat it. That was my right eye, and I can see it. It just wasn't quite trimmed enough. These scissors will work. And I'm cutting this from the outside so I can make sure I'm not cutting away too much material. I think that will solve the problem, but when I cut it, you see that little, see that little point right there on my thumb? That little point will stab you. Yeah, it's just soft latex, but no one likes to be stabbed. All right, so probably there's someone out there who likes to be stabbed. Most of us find it unpleasant. Um, no, I'm not making a chest piece for this. Uh, normally, uh, I like werewolves with some hair on them. I want them to be kind of like a monster, you know? I want them a, like a bear. Uh, one of my least favorite werewolves design everybody seems to love, and I'm sorry, it's Scottish. Um, uh, good night. Good night. Um, it is dog soldiers because they were, they were bare chested. They didn't have any hair on them. Uh, so I don't sculpt big muscles and, and make people wear that. What I normally do is I make a fur chest piece and then I shave in the muscles into it. So that's what I prefer to do for those. All right, so that's two. Two over here, dang it. And I don't have a pattern for this mask yet. Remember I said the one that I've been using the one that I have been using is, oh boy, okay, I kicked my airbrush. Hang on. What sucks about airbrushes is hoses. Hoses everywhere, as Buzz Lightyear would say. So sometimes you walk by and you kick a hose. Not like kicking hose, but you know what I mean. Um, I don't have a pattern for this. That those masks were made from a, that hair was a pattern for a different mask. But it's a werewolf is a werewolf is a werewolf. It'll mostly fit. Now, I'm gonna make a pattern for this. So those of you guys who are working on hair stuff, this is how you'll make a fur pattern for a mask. I wanna get some fabric. And this is actually black felt. Uh, it works fine for what we are doing. And I'm gonna do my pattern in two pieces. Uh, the other one was two pieces too, but it's sewn together. And th those are gonna go here, behind the ear, cut, cut, so there'll be a back piece, and there'll be a front piece, just like the other one. I gotta clean the table off a little bit. This table's a little bit of a mess. So I'll talk to you guys while I do that. I need some flat spaces. Uh, absolutely, I, I pad masks like crazy. Uh, normally I try not to make them to where they need padding just to fit comfortably. I try to sculpt it with the human head in mind and keep that person in there. So, um, yeah, normally, yes, do I pad them? Absolutely. Do I want to pad them? No, I don't want to pad them. I want them to be functional masks without padding. Uh, you need to move. This is a pig in mask. He is made of several pigs sewn together. We fun. Not quite done painting him yet, but I will be. Just you're not abandoned. I don't have a cameraman. What I have is I have me in my shop, and my first priority is to make cool posters. My second priority is to give good knowledge. 
And my third priority is to produce good videos. So you can see it's a little bit further down the list. And right now, the Make Cool Monsters is happening. But hopefully you're getting good knowledge at the same time. These have empty werewolves on them. Empty meaning two-piece mask, you can see. Top jaw, bottom jaw sitting on top of his head. Uh, yes, I'm going to hair those later tonight, too. I do have a pattern for that. And I think we're going to work down here. And I think that this is almost clean enough. That garbage. So, why professional spaces work is because they're set up for one thing. Um, why it's a little bit harder in a home studio like this is I don't have a sewing area that is always set up for sewing. I don't have a painting area that's always just set up for painting. I have to clean off a table, get, you know, do whatever, and then set up for that particular activity. So, ideally, I would have a sewing room where I make patterns and where I sew them together and store the fabric and all that. I don't, I don't have that yet. Uh, but this is the biggest shop I've ever been in in my life uh, that I owned, uh, and this is this two-car garage, there's a two-car garage over there, and an upper level. I was a teenage wear skunk. I have never heard of that video. Is it a keeper? Is it worth watching? Let me know. It sounds terrible, to be honest. I want to move my mask over and my fabric. Why is this paper here? I'll transfer my pattern to paper later. Paper later. And I have a couple of silver Sharpies because they will show up on this black fabric. Silver Sharpie! Midnight Sun. I watched the trailer, and yes, it is. Okay, then I will... Uh, Jump right on to watching the I Was a Teenage Wears Come. After I'm done in the shop, normally I go hang out in the pool for about half an hour before I go to bed. Whoop. All right. And uh, while I'm doing that, often I will watch YouTube videos. So I need to make sure I have enough material. Uh, but I'm only going to come down to the ears, basically, uh, and down, because remember, this is a two-piece piece, two-piece piece. Two piece. Mark. Why do I have two Sharpies? Because that would work so good. Mark my center line. Yes, that's my center line. I'll make these guys a little bit hairier than normal. I can always cut away. But it's very difficult to add here, you know? It's not very difficult. I just showed you it wasn't very difficult. But at least, you know, I can pretend it's difficult. And what I did here was this wasn't sitting flat, so I folded this fabric. I put a big dark in it, all right? And when I unfold that, I'm going to have a line that I drew on both sides of this dark where I sew it together. So I'm going to cut this out, and then I'll sew it together before I put it on. But that means that this flat piece of fabric is going to hold that shape perfectly. 
And every now and then as you're going, you need to cut These scissors are a bit ridiculous for uh, cutting fabric. Well, fabric is fine, but not when it's on a head like this. These are much more reasonable. Normally I glue. Uh, I do not normally punch hair in my masks. I have punched hair in masks. I know how to punch hair in masks for haunted houses. Then you can glue it back down. But if the hair is punched in, you have to know how to do that in order to fix it. So I'm not as big of a fan. Now see how that's gonna seam up very nicely and just allow that to be. It's kind of nice. Coming down to the ear. I'll go around the ear. But I want this to sit as flat as possible. Uh, sometimes I pin them in. I did move some pins over from somewhere. There they are. Uh, I'm not going to stab in this hard foam head, but I can put them in at an angle. They just go to latex that way. Basically, I want to run along behind the ear. I know that now I'm marking the inside of the fabric instead of the outside of the fabric. I'm actually not marking anything. Okay. So I'm going to cut to that point where I marked. And this might not make a lot of sense yet, or maybe it makes perfect sense. See, but that's going to set right there. This can come out a little bit. And I'm going to go down with it. This is my half of a pattern. I really need it to come to here. Into the back. I want to make sure that I'm following this center line. This center line is still true. I have a little divot in the sculpt I'm lining that center line up with. So that is my point there. And for starters, just going to cut here. Oh, this has no shape, no form right now. All I'm doing is I'm removing all this excess that I don't need. You need a bunch of fabric in the beginning, and then you narrow it down to I only need so much. And this one, I'm not going to leave as big of a bell of fabric. I'm going to control that a little better. All that extra fabric is great because it doesn't uh, cause a problem, whereas you don't have enough. But it's also just a little bit sloppy. Uh, perfectly fitted would be more precise and better. Okay. All this is just in the way. This is what I have to work with. I'm going to grab a couple more pins because pinning will set you free from uh, making mistakes.
Pins are another thing you don't like to lose track of. Hello, Shane. I'm sorry, guys. I can't control the buffering. I'm working on getting faster upload speed. It's coming. I ain't got it right now. So that is pinned. And I want to pin it one more time here underneath the ear. Great. Now, what I don't like is how all of this fabric is just a big flying nun. You guys can't really see the issue with it because. Well, just because. That's there. Let's come up to here. Let's come up to here. And there. And that's going to be a big dart. I mentioned the darts earlier. See how that's a dart? That's well, there's lines here. I'm going to cut all that out. You'll see me cut it out. Right to now. I'm going to cut it out. What I do want to do is make a hard corner right there. Somewhere that I have to start or stop sewing, I don't want that to be ambiguous. And this is going to give me that shape of the head that I want. So I'll use this in order to do another half. Okay, so this is going to come down like that. This will sew together. These two will sew together. And that'll be the whole back of the head covered in fur. Yeah, great. I need still to make the front piece. So I'll cut off some fabric. I don't want to miss any comments, so forgive me for keeping checking. Keeping checking. I'm sure those are words. Not meant together. So once again, I want to put this on the center line and work from there. And I know I'm not going to get any of this. So right now, just going to get rid of it. And I'm making a pattern for half of the head. Half, half, half of the head. Hello, 33 people. Silver Sharpie. Let me get you guys a little closer. Come a little bit closer now. Boom, 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 I'm sure that's a song. I think I started with Come a Little Closer and I went to La Bamba with the tune. Sorry. 
Monster Maker, not a musician. Okay, that should give me plenty. That is coming almost straight down. I got to make, if this goes off course and isn't straight down the chin, then I have problems. <clears throat> So I am now set. This is what that half of the face pattern looks like. This is the curve under the ear that I'm cutting out right now. And then I want to go straight down to this. Cut that to a nice point. So I have where I will face half. I do want to mark the fold line. And the sewing line right there. Get this out of the way. Now, where the others fit pretty good, this should fit like a glove on those heads. Water. We need water. Mm. Probably 100 degrees today in Texas, uh, Fahrenheit. Probably. Pulling the pins out of the head. I gotta make pull. And this is not a lot. I gotta make pull. Fabric. Hallelujah. This is just um, paper from Home Depot. It is, uh, they call it construction paper. It's not like the construction paper you use in school when you're a kid. It is paper for construction sites, for putting down on a walkway, making sure the path stays clear. This guy first because he's the biggest. And the trick is to lay it out flat. And now I can see in this that I've got a curve here where I should have a straight line. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a straight line. I'm going to work off of that. In sculpture, when you want something to look like something, use a visual reference. In sewing, 
when you need something to look like something, use a reference. All right, so what I will do is I have to pretend that this line is straight. That is where it feels straight, and I don't have a pucker in this. Uh, I am giving myself a seam allowance in here as I work on those darts. And now see, that's, the pattern is that much different because this line's curved and I can't trust it. I'd rather have a little bit of extra fabric there than not have enough. And because I did half of that pattern, then I'm going to write Wolfman 2018, back of head, This is so, this is another dart. First mask in 1995 is when I made my first mask. And I made 2010. So I made some crappy masks for a while. That's okay, I chalk it up to learn it. So I'm cutting out this half so I can flip it over and then I'll trace the other half. Now, if these masks were being used in a movie, I'd pull this whole pattern back an inch, and I would punch in that last inch of hair along the face lines. This is being used in a haunted house where the lighting conditions are more favorable. So, there is that. And now I need this to, this is only half of the pattern, remember? So I'm going to use my yardstick. Make a nice seam exactly where I want it. So I put my yardstick down there along that line. Then I can finish folding it over. have a nice edge now. I can finish folding it over and just trace this. It's a beverage. It's a work tool. It's both.
if it were thinner paper, I'd have to you know, make a bunch of little hash marks just to make sure I was on the right side of the paper and all that. is extra. It's not garbage. When I ship masks, I crumple up all this stuff, and I, when I ship a mask, I crumple all this up, and that's my padding, so I don't throw it out. I use it. Let's move all these. Let's see how our tracing did. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right there. These are paperweights. Okay. Da, 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 da. Have you done, or would you consider doing a video on making a bust of oneself for sculpting and mask making? I haven't done one. It's kind of an advanced technique. Most of my videos are about 20 minutes long. Now, the live videos that I've started doing, they obviously take much longer, but it's not something you do to yourself. You do not do a head cast of yourself. You, at least not one with alginate and all that. I mean, it's, the odds of you dying are very slim, but you could certainly rip out all your eyelashes by accident. So those kinds of things prevent me from doing too much of that, simply because I get one of my favorite YouTube comments on one of my videos is the comment was that's a really cool project but where you painted it brown what if I wanted it green yeah you painted yours brown I'd like to make this but I want a green one so my answer to this YouTube comment was then just paint it green or just paint it brown just paint it the color you want. And they were like, oh, okay, thanks. That is something, that, that was a rough question for me. It's like, oh yeah, okay. People of all different skill levels and capabilities, and frankly, even not native English speakers, watch these videos. So if I do a process that could hurt someone, it has to be explained in super duper minute detail. Because in the world we live in, someone could sue me and say, in a YouTube video, he told me to do it this way. And I hurt myself. Wouldn't that suck? <laughs> it's like, you were in Peru, what did I know? So that is, uh, that's something that I consider. I haven't done a, a real head cast video yet, uh, but it's a complicated process. Um, Start by like doing an, like, you know, get alginate and do an alginate cast of your hand or do a silicone mold of your hand. Get a feel for the materials. A head cast should not be your first project. You don't want that as your first project because there's so many places it can go wrong and it's a lot of wasted material if you screw it up. So do a cast of your hand. You know, do your hand. Do a friend's hand. And then maybe do a friend's ear. Uh, maybe then do a half of a friend's face because alginate is actually pretty cheap and get to know the material before you end up really making a full head cast. So I guess the short end, the mold doesn't really degrade much. Uh, the flax is very forgiving. Yeah, if I was doing 60 or 70 pulls, it might have a problem. But I going strong. So I already have one. 
So that's why I haven't been hard pressed. If I needed to do another one, then uh, I probably would. All right. Am I free? No, I'm not free. All right, that is my back of head pattern right there. And marked is where I need to sew it and all that stuff. I can probably do my face pattern on this too, because here is that, it's tiny. If I just flip this around, I have to get one of these together and sew it up so I have a test and I know that it's going to work. And if I have to do any modifications, I'll come. This time, I'm going to do the simple task of flipping it this way. All right, so there we go. I'm putting a couple arrows on it because I know the way I want the fur to go, the fur direction. And this is Wolfman face. Twenty eighteen. Because yes, there's a Wolfman face twenty sixteen out there somewhere, and a Wolfman face. 2012. Now I've probably thrown those away by now, but still. get that out of the way. I get my big old roll of paper out of my way. I'm done with that for now. Yeah, you know what? Biddy Mold Supply does a great life casting videos. You're absolutely right. How do you keep masks in good condition? Um, after each night of performance, because I remember I'm a haunted house guy, um, after they're worn, I wipe them out inside with an antibacterial wipe. That is as much for the mask as it is for the next actor. But I then uh, dry it out. Keep that mask as dry as you can. And keep it out of the sun. Uh, UV light uh, will kill latex. It'll make it fall apart over time. So the UV light is bad. Sorry, I'm concentrating because I'm cutting out on the line. Um, UV light is bad. I actually protect my masks with Armor All. I'll give them a spray down with Armor All. Armor All is uh, it's meant to protect your dashboard of your car, which is a vinyl uh, type material, very similar to latex. So it keeps oils in there, and I like Armor All on latex. I also know I'm not a collector. Collectors may have vastly different ideas than me because they want to keep their masks for 30, 40, 50 years. I want to get three to five years of life out of a mask. 
After that, it's going to I need to get it in fur. Just one copy for now, in fur. I can, so I can, so I can. Make a monster mask. Boop. Okay. When I happen to have fur, drop her. Again, this is a roll. The rest of the roll is all down there. I want to look and check. Yes, the fur direction is going this way. So I know that. Uh, just to be super sure. It's exciting! Okay, and I, I'm too far away from the camera right now to see those comments, but uh, I may have going to look at them as soon as I... And what I'm doing is, yes, I'm using a black marker on dark gray fabric. Sorry, you guys are screwed. I can see it. Very close to the edge here. No. Boom. I'm going to grab a razor blade from over here. And with a good sharp ring, I cut my hair, my fur, from the back with the razor blade because uh, that's the best way to do it. I'm not going to cut all those little hairs this way. Uh, if I cut with scissors, I'd be cutting all the hairs off. If I cut all the hair off, then that scene is really ugly, especially the, like the end that wants to hang down. I want them to be long. If I cut them off with scissors, then it just kind of stops abruptly and doesn't look very good. And this razor blade is about at the end of its lifespan. It is uh, giving me some trouble. It's a little sticky. New ones of these, they cut like a frickin' laser. And I am being pretty close to my line. It's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said at the beginning of the video, perfect. We'll make a monster and have it look cool. Cover that sucker in fur because it'll hide a lot of your crimes. That is my bear wolf chin piece. This guy set. You over here. You over here. Now this one's going to be a little harder because it's a it's a vastly different shape. That's got some wings on it and stuff. Easier to make it one piece, but it sure would be less fitted if I did that. Slide over, see I'm hanging off the edge. Look at that now, don't be surprised by it later.
These are paperweights. Hello. All right. Now I am set to start marking. But I'm going to try and find a silver Sharpie because the black, I'd have to work too hard to get it to show up. Finding a silver Sharpie that still has good juice in it is the thing. Plaster dust kills Sharpies. I gotta come over here, tap the camera. Focus, Daniel son. Focus. Uh, this is what fur cloth is this? This is just it's fake hair. I buy from a company called Monterey Mills, but uh, if you're buying five yards or less, you can buy it from Joanne's Fabrics. Um, Chris, I just try and make it make sense. I just try to make, um, I try to make it make sense. Uh, is what I try to do. And when I think about the haunted house, I think about the story. And the story tells me what characters go into the show. And that tells me kind of what masks I have to make. That's it, man. Uh, if it's a, uh, if the room that they're going to be in is a graveyard, well, I'm thinking, you know, you might go with a zombie. You might go with a grave digger. Uh, in a graveyard, you could also do a vampire or a werewolf, or you could have some teenage girls playing witches in the graveyard, and they summoned up a demon. I mean, you can do a lot of different stuff if you think about the setting that it's in, and you know, what what makes sense to be there. If this were a horror movie, what character would it be? And then go with that. I have found audiences in a haunted house really don't want to think more than they have to. So don't make them work, you know. Don't, uh, don't have the, uh, the gypsy witch pop up in the medical lab. That doesn't, that maybe you can find a reason to make it work, but the customer's not going to think it through. They're going to be scared for three seconds as, as she jumps out, and then they'll say, Hey, what's a gypsy doing in a medical lab? That's how customers sound, all of them, just so you know. Hey, why are you scaring me? Oh, that's right, I paid you. Hmm. All right. I believe we are traced. I can move my crazy bottle collection out of the way. And just like I went and got a new Sharpie, I'm going to go get a new razor blade because I want this to be easy. It's so easy, easy when everybody's trying to please me. It all feels so right. Okay, guys, I apologize about that. The, uh, I don't have the best feed out here in the country where I live. No. I literally live in a log cabin in the woods. Yeah, see right now there's no snag on this whatsoever. This is cutting it. It's like I'm cutting it with my mind powers. That's how sharp this ray blade is. Joke is on the razor blade. I don't have mind powers. Once again, I got quiet because I'm cutting something and uh, it requires a bit of concentration so that I don't lose a finger. Because man, I hate losing fingers. 
I know I've tried. So what do I do when these, when these razor blades are dull? I throw them away. And I do that because um, they're dangerous. You're more likely to snag and slip, and you gotta brace it, and uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the chance of hurting myself or one of my shop helpers um, because I'm cheap. Throw it away. The cost of this mask is $300. Um, no, this is the Wolfman mask. So the cost of this mask is $150. It's only a one-piece mask, but it's got a lot of hair work on it. So if I throw away a 20-cent razor blade, even a dollar razor blade, every time I make one, that's okay. Because, you know, the, the, the profit is there enough to pay for that material. I'm okay using up 30 bucks worth of fur or 40 bucks worth of fur on it because this is uh, 20 a yard. So I'm okay with that. Why wouldn't I be okay with um, throwing away a razor blade? That is my, that's the back of my head. I already cut out my face. I'm ready to move on to sewing, gang. So what I'm gonna do for this evening for this evening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get this sewn up and I'm going to test it on the Wolfman over there. And if that works out, great. I'm going to take a break, go to dinner, come back, and I've got one more Wolfman to fur. And then I knock out the werewolf pattern, which is the same thing, only with a bigger mess. Like I was ready for it, here is my sewing machine. I'm gonna plug it in actually to the same thing the phone is plugged into. Yeah, in all my videos, I pretty much do on my phone. Keeps it pretty easy. But I unplugged you guys, didn't I? At some point. Now it lights up. Check my comments. Well, good night, Scott. Okay. I'm going to grab my stool because sometimes sewing is easier on. Think about how smart the first guy was who invented a sewing machine. Because, man, there's some magical crap that happens inside of there. This is about the tallest table that I can sew on because the cord for the pedal is only so long. I'm going to set these guys up. Always check your sewing machine out first. Make sure things are good. Make sure you're pressing your foot up. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is sew together all these little darts. forth on the sewing machine that's called back stitching and that is what helps lock it in place. I always try to remember to cut my thread as soon as I'm done because I don't want I don't want to have to go chase these threads down later. Uh, my memory is pretty good. If you don't remember where these line up and need to be sewn, then uh, pin them. Pin them. Lay it all out ahead of time. I am not a pinner. Uh, that makes some people who like to sew professionally, it makes them cringe because 
my pieces could shift. The quarter inch of shift I'm going to get over a six or eight inches of sewing doesn't matter in a mask. It matters in a sleeve. Doesn't matter in a mask. Establishing the curve of the head. That's happening as I sew these together. You always want to sew from the inside out. You always want to sew from the inside out to go back and comb the fur. Oh man, how long has it been? out of the seam because you're going to sew it into that seam and you want to get it out of there. I'm using the quarter inch uh, seam allowance I gave myself. to leave black in my sewing machine because that's what I sew with the most forgiving. Again, I brushed that out and those uh, not noticed at all. All right, so now I'm going to take my face piece. Fold it in half just so I can see. And I'm going to sew it. my back head piece. Well, you always want to make sure that your thread is kicked to the back of the machine so that it doesn't cause a problem. Man, this thread causes a problem. And I don't have to worry about my precision too terribly much on this. All that I have to do is sew it up. I just want to look and I got to make sure that I get it lined up just right. I don't want to sew the wrong bit to the wrong bit. Bad in surgery, bad in mask making. Use general caution when sewing your bits. a good hood. And a hood is what I call the fur piece 
after it's made but not attached. Look at the ground. Think about what you did. Okay, sorry. Tell us how you do. Make this go right side out now. I'm gonna comb it after. So that looks good up front. That looks pretty good right there. Okay. Let's see up here. This is gonna, that's a hard corner for that ear. Perfect. Oh, oh, beautiful. It makes them happen. Yeah, okay, that's exactly what I wanted. I'm happy with it. So, great. Ha, uh, a tip from a friend who works with fur. If you have trouble sewing fur, shave the seam allowance. As I was saying, I use a Singer Heavy Duty and it has never had an issue with fur. I've never had to do that. I know that tip, but I've never had to do that. Do you have to sketch out your characters before making them? No, I don't sketch out. What I do is I make a whole folder of images that I use for sculpting reference. And I might take the eyebrows from one thing and the jaw from another thing, uh, the teeth from another, another thing. You know, I might do all of that to make my new monster. Guys, this is sexy. Having the fabric fitted makes a giant difference in how easy this goes together. All of that half set. Let's do some spraying and praying over here. Painting it on with an airbrush. There is a solvent of this container. If I leave it in there for about six or seven hours, it gets soft. And then if I leave it in there like overnight, eventually it'll eat through it. And it'll eat through it and start puddling down on the table. So I'm very careful about that. I'm gonna throw this bottle away when I'm done. But again, this is a $10 airbrush. So I'm paying $2 for each one of these. That is a consumable that I'm gonna use while I'm making these masks. And I'll be right back. In this town we call home and everyone hails with the pumpkin song. All right.
mask into a full mask, one of the ways. You can make it into a sock mask, that works really well. Um, and I, you know, I can look, if that's the corner of my ear, I've got an inch of mask left. I don't spend any more than an inch in there then. Now you'll see that this mask actually, the hair will fit tighter to my head because it's fitted. It's the difference between a tailored suit and an off the rack suit. Yeah, it kind of fits. Or does it make you look good? And I want this to make me look good. I want it to look like his skin, you know? Not a, not a hairy bag he decided to wear. Can you use a portable airbrush when making masks? Absolutely, sure. As long as, I mean, now, for airbrushing them, absolutely. For spewing out contact cement like I'm doing, this is thick stuff. So you want an airbrush that'll put out at least, at least 90 PSI. Right now I'm on 60, but I will crank it up higher if I need to blow out a clog or something like that. There we go, looking at comments. Looking at comments, wonderful, perfect. Okay. Um, I'm not quite tacky enough yet on this mask. You know what I'm excited about, guys? I'm excited about hairing up these guys later. I'm very happy with that sculpt. I think they painted up very nice. I'm just happy with them. I have some... I have four of them to fur this evening. Four of them. I have one more of this and four of the other ripples. And I know, see, here's what's great. Now I can start anywhere because I'm not going to have a ton of excess to worry about. Just line that up. On the other one, I had to start in the exact right spot. I had to start in the center of the head because it, uh, that's, I was gonna have extra somewhere. I'm not worried about that now. Now I think that I'm gonna put this together and it's gonna fit great. And so far I'm putting this together and it is fitting great. That is behind the ear. this here. Yeah, that's, that is a sexy fit right there, guys. Hitting this at actually like just the right time where I have a little bit of workability in it. Uh, where I meaning I can lift it and put it back down and lift it and put it back down. Most of, if you're if you wait too long on your contact cement, then you end up you don't have a lot of play as far as that goes.
and because this fits so well, I have less slop. So it's one, I have to make sure that it fits, you know, the same on both sides and that that works. And uh, now that I'm happy with where this is landing, I'm going to go ahead and push that in, push it in. Again, I'm adding, you know, before when I was just placing it all down, I wasn't really rubbing it in and making it stick. But now I am. Pop this up. And this is, you guys saw every step of this process. You saw me make the pattern. You saw me cut it out. You saw me sew it together. You saw me glue it down. Now see this one, there's less belling out on the sides of the, of the, of the neck. It, it's, it's tighter here. Ah, get my beard out of there. All right, trim that mask up a little bit, a little more fur, get out of there. So more beard actually shows through. See, I brought this all the way up in here. If I want to trim it back, I can, but I have the option to leave it on there just like that. So, gang, this, this worked correctly. I'm going to take a dinner break. I'll probably come back and be live for a couple more hours later on tonight. You guys are awesome. See you later. Go make stuff. Bye.